Hello lovers, welcome back to my channel. I know this is an off day, right? It's a Friday. I haven't posted on a Friday in a while, but today is a very special conversation. So I am going to be talking about the new Bravo show, Love Match Atlanta. I actually wasn't going to talk about this show um, on my channel, really other than just a, a quick mention, but I actually had a couple of people chime in and ask me for my thoughts um, in private message on Instagram. And I was reading the comments, uh, going through the show as I was watching the show, you know, just being a curious person, looking at the hashtag Love Match Atlanta and seeing some of the feedback from the viewers on the show, basically picking apart some elements of matchmaking that I felt required a little bit of clarity. So if this is your first time here, my name is Jasmine Diaz. I'm a professional matchmaker and dating strategist. I have been matching singles for over two decades and um, the journey has been long. It's been hard, I will say. Every single week I talk about dating and relationships, giving new tips, advice, tutorial, how to's, whatever. But today we're gonna be definitely getting into the conversation on Love Match Atlanta. Um, if you are seeing this video for the first time, you probably missed where I plugged the show um, maybe two videos ago because I am friends with four of the five matchmakers featured on the show. So I know them very well. I've known them for many, many years and we work together. I am a champion of black matchmakers because there's not many of us uh, available uh, just in general. If we're comparing white matchmakers or other matchmakers who work with um, other people, there's just not a lot of black matchmakers. So we tend to know each other and the industry's just small. But what is really interesting to me here is some of the comments about uh, fees, about colorism, about uh, just a number of different things. So I'm gonna get into each one. Um, I'm probably gonna find a comment to share as it relates to what I'm talking about on the screen so you kind of have that there. But uh, as a black matchmaker, I am actually one of the few, if not the only here on YouTube who posts regularly. So there's not a lot of perspective here um, from people who know this industry really well on YouTube. A lot of the other voices that you might hear on YouTube are experts or people who have very strong opinions, um, coaches, but not necessarily matchmakers. And matchmaking is a very specific specialty. It's very unique. So let's dig into some of the comments, okay? And I'll, I'll definitely break through some of what I've heard on the show. So one of the most glaring things that comes up on the very first episode of Love Match Atlanta is the fee. So you hear Tana and Kelly talk about their matchmaking fee being $25,000 and Shay's matchmaking fee being closer to, I think she said $2,000 to $3,000 is kind of her range. I don't want a man that bad. Did she say 25K for their matchmaking services? $25,000 to find a man? Bye. What I want to say about matchmaking fees is that they're dependent on a lot of factors. So one factor might be age. Age is one of those things that, um, you know, when it comes to matching singles in terms of finding singles, age plays a role in where you kind of sit in the matchability spectrum. I feel like I need to add clarity to what that means because say for example, you are 30 something. I feel like the 30s are a really great age group for finding love because you have access to the people in your 20s, your 30s and your 40s. Um, but age plays an interesting part because depending on what your age is and what your age preference is, that can really determine whether or not you're you're someone who has a very wide pool of singles to tap into or a smaller pool to tap into. So hearing on the show that the that uh, Tana and Kelly, which is the duo, um, charge twenty five thousand dollars, that's actually not abnormal. I'm kind of in that range as well. So um, so with regards to the fee, it's not so much about this is how much I'm charging for you to go on a date because that would be ridiculous to charge someone $25,000 just to go on a date. It's much more broader than that. But if we think about fees, think about matchmakers as people who have an occupation, right? You have a nine to five 
And your nine to five is to do whatever you do in your industry. You might be a marketing professional, someone who's in sales, you may be a physician, uh, whatever it is that that is ultimately what you do for 40 hours a week, perhaps even more. Now, when we think about matchmakers, most matchmakers are working with people for either six months to 12 months. And that fee has to sustain them for however long they're working with that client. Most of us black matchmakers, unfortunately, we cap at, a, at the number of people that we work with at one time. So whereas our white counterparts, they are actually charging somewhere in the $50,000 to $100,000 range and more. Has anybody seen Patty Stanger? She's a millionaire matchmaker, which means she's charging a very high premium to work with her. So as black matchmakers, we're actually paying, uh, or excuse me, charging about 50% less than the industry standard. A lot of our white counterparts are charging 50K to 100K. So to hear a matchmaker, a black matchmaker, talk about the fee being $25,000, that sounds like absurd to the normal, like an average everyday person. But if you were to consider that this matchmaker is only working with probably 10 people per year, per year or less, and depending on how long their contract with, is with that person, they're really not earning nearly as much. Now, of course, there's going to be changes or differences in client to client. Not everybody's going to require a $25,000 fee. Some clients might be less, some may be a bit more, depending on their age, their location, um, and their specific preferences. But the fee itself is not necessarily the issue. It's, it's really come, can't talk. It really comes down to um, how experienced this matchmaker is. And we talk about success rate as being one of those things um, and how long they've been uh, matching for singles. And so, you know, the outcome is a really big, important thing. So the fee was definitely something I saw in the comments section, even here on YouTube, on Bravo's um, uh, channel, they have the full episode, which I encourage you to go ahead and check out because it's a really good show. Yeah, there's drama, but you know, there's drama in every occupation that we work in. So let's be real. There are people, there are coworkers that we have that we don't get along with. Matchmaking is no different. Another comment that I saw um, talked about a bit was in the scene where Shay is working with, um, I think she's a sex blogger, if memory serves correct, let me know if I'm wrong. Um, but she was working with this sex blogger and she made some comments about her not being the typical client she usually works with. And some of the, the comments that I read on Twitter and even here on YouTube were about colorism. Um, there was a comment about her being dark skin. Um, this also kind of piggybacks into like, being not the typical IG model type. So did I understand her to say that they don't usually help dark complected and curvy women with matchmaking? I feel like this lady is trying to say that her client is too dark skinned and too big to find love. What is the truth about matchmaking is that we do not manufacture who is available. We do not have any control in like what someone finds interesting. So if a matchmaker says that you're not typically the client that I usually work with, um, it's not a personal dig. It's just, they usually work with certain demographics of people. And what is, I feel lost in the discussion about uh, this comment that Shay made is the fact that her database may be very specific and that client might not be matchable based on who she actually has access to. That doesn't say anything about her personal feelings. It has nothing to do with how she personally feels. It just may be that as a matchmaker, she may not have a lot of men who, who may be interested in that client. And so she says, I, you know, you're not typically what I work with, but I wanna help you anyway. And that is actually a good thing to hear from a matchmaker. Now I know I can say for myself, I've worked with people that I knew would slightly be a challenge because who, who is available in my network isn't interested in them. So that means I have to work a little bit harder to find more of that type of what that 
uh, that person might be interested in or what that match might be into. It's just, it requires more time and more work. And um, unfortunately, because this person may not be your typical client, um, or you may not have access to the, the number of people that this person is interested in, your fee will probably dictate that. So you might find yourself a little bit more on the higher end of working with a matchmaker because they don't have a large enough pool of people, which means they have to do more. Now, um, what I wish this show would actually do is spend a little bit more time working on, on uh, or at least highlighting the process of matching because yeah, it's great to talk about the drama of the show, which is still, I highly encourage you all to watch the show. I want you to support Black Matchmakers because we need the support. But what is missed when you are focused more so on the drama and less on the matches themselves is that you don't really see all the work that's involved that Shay has done to find this person to match or that Tana and Kelly has done to find this person to match or even Joseph and so Emming, I don't know Ming personally, so I don't mention her. Um, no shade, I just don't know her. But, um, but the work involved with finding matches for clients is very extensive, which is why our fees are what they are. This is a full-time job for many of us. We don't have any other occupations and cost of living is high, right? And so if you are um, dedicating your eight-hour day to a client, then you will see that their fees will definitely dictate that. Now, as it relates to colorism, as I mentioned before, as being one of the things talked about in the show, colorism is alive and well. Unfortunately, I did a whole video about colorism and dating and uh, my disdain for it. And yeah, I mean, you could definitely check out that video if you want to talk more about it. But colorism definitely plays a part with regards to matchmaking because we are limited in who a person will agree to date. So if you don't want to go on a date with someone of a certain skin tone or age or uh, ethnicity or weight or, red or whatever it may be, as a matchmaker, you are limited. Now, of course, you may choose not to work with that person. And I would say that's the way to go. If you have um, issues with skin tone, if you feel like you don't date black women, you are not the matchmaker. I am not the matchmaker for you. That's, that's essentially what it comes down to. But um, not everyone has my frame of mind. And unfortunately, you know, when you have matches in your database, everyone has their own preferences. So this is something I feel like um, the show um, touches on, but the comments kind of ran away with it. Shay is not colorist. She is not anti plus size woman. It's just that as matchmakers, we are um, kind of we are restricted in some areas. It's not for our lack of wanting. It is just the, the pool is the pool. The pool is unfortunately the pool. And if for some reason you guys need clarity on what I mean by that, definitely drop me a comment because I'm more than happy to expand or expound, whatever, you get it. <laughs> okay, so certifications were one of the ongoing themes in the comments section um, on Love Match Atlanta season one. Is getting a matchmaker certification like becoming an officiant online? What is this whole certified thing? What school are you going to learn how to matchmaker? What classes y'all taking? What papers y'all writing? Who is certifying you? After searching Google, these people are fraudulent. It's no such thing as a certified matchmaker nor a certificate. It's really hilarious to me because um, as a matchmaker, I've been matchmaking, as I said, for two decades and matchmaking certifications were not available when I first started matchmaking. So I am not a certified matchmaker. I've had, I was years in many, many years in um, to my matchmaking business and just working as a matchmaker before they even started. So going back to get certified and um, like work through classes and doing things that I had already been there and done that wasn't appealing to me. However, I will say that anyone coming up after me, which is mostly everyone on this show, um, went through the Matchmaking Institute. The Matchmaking Institute uh, started offering um, certifications for matchmaking through the Department of Education of New York. 
since 2005, and they are the longest standing, most legitimate body for certifying matchmakers. So, uh, so reading the comments, they're like, where are these certifications coming from? Like, I could get, I, you know, I got certified by my cereal box. Like, listen, guys, for real, we are, we are legitimate people who have real businesses. And I get, like, for a lot of people watching the show, they've never even heard of Black Matchmakers before. So, of course, they just think we're just some people who came up and just decided to charge thousands of dollars for no reason. But many of us are certified, and this certifying body does have standards, right? Code of conduct that most certifying bodies would have that matchmakers have to adhere to because at the end of the day, it's all about trying to protect the client, right? These people are paying thousands of dollars to work with matchmakers, right? So you want to have some assurance that these people are honest, right? They are reliable, that they have um, contracts that are enforceable, and um, their personal practices, like they they follow a moral code. And so, um, so it's really important that you understand that there are people who are certified, and this is what it's about. Um, really funny to me to actually read people they're like mm, certified by who all right so this last one uh i can tell you there's been a couple of youtube videos just today that came out which kind of added a little fire under me to create this video uh where they talk about uh you know matchmakers or whether or not they are married are these matchmakers married in serious relationships so I can tell you that, um, you know, there's always going to be that saying, right? Those who can't teach. But I do know that Tan is actually married. She's been married a long time. Kelly um, also married, uh, but I believe she's single now. And um, the others I can't speak to. I don't know their personal lives in that regard. But just because a matchmaker isn't married doesn't make them less qualified. Um, their success rate says a lot about their abilities to actually find you a match, which is really, at the end of the day, what you care most about. You care about whether or not that 25K is going to get you what you need. You don't necessarily care whether or not your matchmaker hasn't found their partner, right? It's more about you as a client and whether or not you get your outcome. It's not really... It don't even matter. Like, why do you even care so much about if your matchmaker's taken or not? It just, I don't know. But I know that with a uh, millionaire matchmaker, Patty was famously single and probably still is. And I have my own reasons for why that might be. But um, just know <laughs> that the matchmakers on the show, you know, just because they haven't had success or they have had success. Let me tell you, just being in a relationship for a long time um, and it ending doesn't mean it's a failure. So Shay mentioning on the show, she was in an eight year relationship um, with her daughter's father and it failed, uh, doesn't make her a failure. It just, it just doesn't. Relationships go through its life cycle and unfortunately they do end, but that doesn't take away the fact that Shay is a great matchmaker and it doesn't take away the fact that Joseph might be. I don't know if he is, but <laughs> I'm just saying, it, it doesn't take away the fact that these people really know their craft. So I wanna know from you, have you guys been watching Love Match Atlanta? If you haven't, go ahead and take a look at an episode. I'm actually gonna drop a link to um, the first episode of the show because I want you guys to watch the show. Watch the show, support us because there, as many people have said, and I think Joseph might have mentioned this on an episode famously, is that when most people consider matchmakers, they think of white matchmakers. They think of Patty Sanger. They might think of the Indian matchmaker. They don't think that black people have matchmakers that are working for them to help them get to the next phase of their love life. And because of that, we are a virtual unknowns. Like we are out here in the trenches, working with singles for years, exclusively with black professionals and no one knows who we are. So I, I really want to give respect to my friends and my colleagues on the show. Love Match Atlanta um, airs every single Sunday. Let me know, guys, what did you think of the show? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have thoughts on the fees? I know everyone has thoughts on fees. 
But until you have had this job, you can think you know and understand what you would charge, but you have not worked this job. You will understand the value of why we charge what we do because it is a lot of work, okay? So put some respect on it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I'll talk to you next week. And next week, I'm gonna be doing my thoughts on the ultimatum because that's another hot mess show that I'm definitely ready to talk about.